Now let's look around. Here's E. Forbes Robinson at left, Roy Jackson Moore center, and Ray Cuomo, all Austin Healy drivers. Texan Carol Shelby in his famous overalls. And again, Fangio, the world champ, with Harry Shell at the right. Here's Ken Miles, California Englishman, and his co-driver, Jean-Pierre Kunstel, and two girl drivers for Renault, Mademoiselle Ferriar and Therion. And here's Donald Healy, famed driver and designer of the Austin Healy, and other cars bearing his name. And this mustache young man is Jeffrey Healy. Over here is Frank Bott, Porsche driver. And here's Jack Ensley, a Jaguar pilot. Officials compare final notes, and the cars roll up to the starting line. Some pilots push their own. And coming up is driver Greenspun, trundling his Ferrari coupe. In the Le Mans start, each driver stands across track from his mount, and that's when the butterflies start working. The timing equipment in this shed gets a final check. But to waiting drivers, the minutes swell to hours as a hundred pre-race preparations fall into position. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. First under the bridge is Collins, a Ferrari, followed by two production Corvettes. Then comes Hawthorne in the Jag as the cars get rolling. Now through the chicane and into the S's. Next, full throttle into Big Ben. These first turns of the first lap where nobody gives way are motor racing's moment of truth. Now hit the brakes for the hairpin, and then throttle again to power down warehouse straight at full bore. Hard right, then hard left of the warehouse turns finds the field sorting into position with Collins still leading in his scarlet Ferrari. Behind him is Sterling Moss in a Maserati. Next is Phil Hill, the Californian, in another Ferrari. Now booming out of a right angle bend down the north-south runway, the field screams through the first lap. There's still no sign of Jean Barra, who started Fangio's Maserati or of the rapid new Corvette. Here's Hansgen in number seven Jaguar, passing Duncan in number two Corvette. Now the slowdown for the U-turn and into the main straight with everything pushed to the firewall. That's how it went in the first lap and the first hour, with Collins holding his Ferrari in the lead and Barra almost 16 seconds behind him. And the grind continues. One hour, two hours, three hours. Here comes David Ash into the pits for a fuel stop and general check on the number 51 MG. While attendants swarm over the car, David unglues himself from the seat and heads for the pit. How's it going? Run it fine, Gus, like a dream. Just watch that corner going into the main straight. I find second gear better than third there. How's the oil pressure holding up? Oil pressure's fine. I think it's running a little bit hot, but you got Hey, nurse. give me a cloth over there. I'll get it. Hold it, honey. You'll get us disqualified. Only two men in the pit. Everything's checked. Nothing's wrong. And the MG goes back into battle again, this time with co-driver Gus Ehrman at the wheel. The sun gets higher and hotter in the Florida sky as the race grinds on. The heat takes its toll, and fading brakes start to plague the leaders. The smaller cars are lapped repeatedly, and like this Renault, they move over for faster cars. Number 
29, which just passed the Renault, has Chuck Hassan at the wheel. And now, leading the MG he just passed, he comes boring through the chicane. And there he goes. Now Berra, in the number 19 Maserati, leads the race. And he just cut one unbelievable lap in 3.24 and 5 tenths, 92 miles an hour. With Berra out ahead in a healthy lead, the two drivers alternate every three hours and conserve their machine as the day wears on. Behind them, the field is having its troubles with overtaxed engines, fading brakes, and drivers stricken with sunstroke. On each of these corners, brakes come in for grueling punishment. Corners are close together. There's no time for cooling. There goes Collins in number 11 Ferrari, still holding tightly to second position. Now coming up to enter the hairpin is Barra, increasing his lead with Fangio's car, number 19. Here comes Bonnier in number 22 Maserati. He has just relieved Scarlatti at the wheel of this Italian machine, one of seven Maserati entries. Driver changes are frequent now. At the third hour, Bill Pollock, West Coast driver, relieved Lance Reventlo at the wheel of Reventlo's spanking new Maserati. And at the same time, Lou Brero, lumberman from California, was pulled from the cockpit of his car with heat prostration, and young Maston Gregory took the wheel. Corvette Super Sports, Detroit's highest hope yet in sports car racing, has been out since shortly after one o'clock. Three other Corvettes are still running strongly at the end of the fourth hour of racing, when 15 of the 65 cars have retired with a variety of ailments. And here is an example. Wiley, driver of this Lotus, is just as determined in tough luck as Juan Fangio in number 19 is with better fortune. Under the rules, drivers may receive no help on the course, so Wiley is pushing his car into the pits for repairs, which must be done with parts and tools carried in the car, plus the help of his pit crew. Mary clocks David, while Wiley's still trying. 